Hi there, and um, welcome to this video about second normal form with normalisation. We've got a definition here for second normal form. Um, it's slightly inaccurate before I go any further, okay? But really, the, these first two uh, criteria here are what we're looking at, okay? These two criteria um, are really for first normal form, but you'll notice that within the second normal form, it says that the table is, in, is, is first in first normal form. So I always find that if we're starting to create new tables in second normal form, which we might do, it's always important to remember that we should always check that each field has a unique name and that it has a primary key. So I'll probably move these slightly separate because these are the two that we should be focusing on. Um, but I always think it's good if your memory is anything like mine that we just need to make sure that when we do create new tables that they do have unique fields and that we make sure we apply a primary key. Okay, made that clear in our design. So let's have a look at this. So if a table is in second normal form, if it is first in first normal form, so if we're happy that we've achieved first normal form, then we're you know part of the way there. Okay, and then we move on to this all non-key attributes are dependent on all parts of the primary key. So we'll have a look at what that means as well. So first off, I've got my data that I had, okay, which looks like this. And I previously have made sure that this is in first normal form. Okay, so there are no repeating groups and there's no non-atomic values. So I'm happy that this is in first normal form because I've already achieved that. So I'm going to go back to my second normal form rule and I'm going to put a yes in for that. Okay, so I've achieved that already. Now, next up is all non-key attributes are dependent on all parts of the primary key. So there's a few things we need to sort of point out here. So let's just sort of make these stand out a little bit. So uh, I'll just make that. So all non-key attributes. Then we've got the word dependent. And then we've got this all parts of the primary key. So let's all just let's just take a moment and actually figure out what these things are. So non-key attributes. Well, if we have a look at the data, okay, this is my key attribute, primary key. So in this table, all my non-key attributes are the attributes that aren't the primary key, or that part of the primary key. So in this table here. This is my, or these are my key attributes. So these are my non-key attributes. Okay, so that's what that means for a staff. Let's go back and have a look. So non-key, so all non-key attributes are dependent on all parts of the primary key. Right. Well, let's have a look. First off, we can see that what that actually means is, is we're talking all parts of the primary key then we're only talking about tables that have a composite key. Okay, because if we've got a table with a one field primary key, then there's not different parts of it. And so automatically, any table that is um, in first normal form and has a one field primary key is already in second normal form. So it's quite nice, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our data. We can see that this table here has a one field primary key. It's in first normal form, so therefore it is in second normal form. So I'm going to go to my normalization thing here. And I'm going to take this table okay, and copy it. And I'm going to paste it, paste special, just the values into there. So that table is already in second normal form, so I can move that across. The other table, however, okay, does have sorry, does have a composite key. So we need to apply this rule and find out actually what it means. So we go to the rule here and it says all non-key attributes are dependent on all parts of the primary key. Okay, so what this means then is that each of these attributes Okay, needs to be dependent on both student and course together. All right, so not just course. 
okay, and not just students. Okay, now we already know that we've got things up here that are mostly to do with the student, so we should be, we should be okay with regards to student. However, we will still be checking. So let's have a look at how this works then. Well, let's go through the attributes one by one. Okay, so if we have a look at course name, now. A course name, is it dependent on the student taking the course, okay, or is it just dependent on just the student or just the course? Okay, well, when we have a look at it, we can think, well, hold it, a student taking a particular course, yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that some, a different student taking the same course would have a different course name. And we can see that whenever we've got a particular course code, then the course name changes with it. And we can see on this one as an example that the course name to, or the course code is 20194 and this is ICT, so this is like a pair. Yeah. And even if the course if the student number changes like it does here, then that still stays the same. So it would it would seem that the course name is actually dependent on just the course code and not the course code with the student. So in this case we know that we can see that course course name is going to need to come out into its own new table. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we've got any other fields similar that are just dependent upon course, let's say. Well, when we have a look at teacher, okay, teacher's another one where it sort of there's a hint of that it's not really dependent on, on both of these, but let's have a look at it first. Well, a teacher ID seems to be dependent on course. And then we've got this course here, 72846, teacher ID 12, okay, and we've got a different student here with 72846 and same teacher. However, this is where we need to think about how the data actually works or how, how the system might actually work. If we do do that, then what we're saying is every time we change teacher yeah as in uh, let, let's say we've got a teacher teaching a course in this case this is uh, H Strasser who's teaching German now if we say that the teacher ID is dependent on the course code then what that means is that if let's say H Strasser decided to leave then we would need to set up a new course for a new teacher which seems a little bit strange doesn't seem like that that should be the case so in this case we can see that although the course name is dependent on the course code the teacher okay isn't dependent on just the course code okay we need to be in a situation perhaps where in reality the course itself can be taught over time by more than one teacher because it's it's realistic that we might have a teacher that leaves before the end of the course Okay, or even that we get more than one teacher perhaps teaching the same course if there's enough students that need to take it. So that one in, in this case, the data, although the data looks like it's, it's de um, dependent, we might suggest that our common sense tells us otherwise. So we're going to leave teacher. And therefore, same with the teacher initial and the teacher surname. Now it's important to mention at this point that you might be looking thinking, well hold it, the teacher initial and teacher surname seem to be dependent on the teacher ID. And you'd probably be right, but that's not what we're dealing with in second normal form. We're dealing with um, dependency on, on parts of the primary key. So course name looks like we're going to move. These three we're going to stay where they are. Okay, and then we're into date completed and the grade. So the date completed here, okay, that is representative of a particular student completing a particular course. So that does hint that that's dependent on both of these. So this is the date that this student, who turns out to be Joseph Harvey, completed this course, which is German, okay, and they completed it on this date. And we can see they also got a, this particular grade for it as well. So these two fields are dependent on both parts of the primary key. Okay, so these two fields are going to stay where they are. Okay, as are these. 
so course name is what we're going to move out. So what I do is I'm going to move course name out of that table okay and I'm going to take a copy of the part of the primary key that it was dependent upon. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in there. Okay and then I'm going to move these back over. Okay so this is how my tables are looking now and then all I do in here now is I can get rid of any repeating values so I can get rid of one of my ICT values there okay and I can get rid of the other German value because if I'm saying course code is going to be primary key then that's what I need to do so let's actually have a look at what that means in our normalization so we have said that the fields that are staying the same okay are so if we copy these and move them up a bit and paste them so paste special values and I want to do the same with date completed and grade so copy those okay so there's that one table so student number course code date completed and grade let's just check that so student number course code date completed grade I forgot the teacher stuff so I need to put that in so the teacher ID in it and surname. So I'm going to copy those. Okay. And then finally I'm going to have the course name. And the uh, course code. Both of those. Okay, so course code and course name. Now, let's just go back to our original rules here. So we've now sorted out that the non key attributes are dependent on all parts of the primary key. Okay, and each field has a unique name. Okay, so let's just check that. So on our normalization. So on our new table, because we've already checked these ones for first normal form. So course code and course name, we can see those two are unique. So yes, that's the case. And has it does it have a primary key? Well, on here I've sorted that out. I've underlined my uh, thing there, but I haven't on my thing here. So this needs to say PK. Okay. okay. Now, just so that we're clear with regards to the teacher situation, when we have a look back at the data, okay, if we had a situation where, let's say, um, we had a different teacher teaching a particular course, so let's say there were two teachers teaching ICT, yeah. Now it may be in that situation that some teachers are taught by, uh, so some students are taught by one particular teacher in one class and some students are, teaching, are taught by another teacher. So let's say, just temporarily, let's just have a look at this. So let's say I had uh, another teacher called um, L. Jordan, let's say. Okay, now in that situation, okay, I've got ICT here, taught by D. Barton here and L. Jordan here. Yeah, and basically that does hint that if we've got a particular teacher here, so this particular teacher, sorry, L. Jordan would need to have a different uh, ID as well, so let's put that in there. So that would mean that we've got this student taking this course means it's this teacher, and this student taking the same course means it's this teacher because they're in a different class. So this does hint that, you know, if we did have a situation where we've got more than one teacher teaching a class, which seems perfectly reasonable to, to assume, you probably think of a number of classes in your school where you've got more than one teacher that teaches a particular course, then that would he help us understand perhaps that it's the student and the course together for that particular scenario. Okay, but obviously, again, we're making an assumption and we'd need to check that with the person that is um, our representative, if you like, in the organisation to be able to check that we've got that information correct 
because it has affected we've, we've it has affected what we've done in second normal form. So we've made a, a, an assumption and we need to check it before we sort of uh, before we're sure that we've got the database designed correctly. Now I'm going to move these back to how they were. So that was 37. But it's just it was just a demonstration, if you like, just to sort of say, well, you know, sometimes the data itself we get a little subset of the data and it might not tell the full story. And we need to be thinking about how the data works and how the scenario fits together before we just assume that we've got it correct. So going back to our second normal form thing now, we've checked and we've got primary keys on each of our tables as well. So now we're sort of happy that we've got our tables into second normal form. 